Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, my dear students, I once again welcome you and to next lecture of uh, psycholinguistic. And this is actually uh, this is a lecture of uh, Hafiz Hafiza Abdullah, and this was uh, I, I really found it amazing and really uh, well for you people. Therefore, I try to. Uh, because uh, she is also a student of fifth semester so I just uh, I'm always uh, I'm always actually on search uh, in order to find such stuff which which can make the concepts more clearer to you people uh, but one thing I remind you here unfortunately uh, you people uh, uh, actually do not watch these uploaded videos I j before I just give you this lecture I just went to YouTube and I found that only 37 people have watched it so please I request you people I mean try to listen and try to watch actually the lecture because a single lecture you know it, it, it takes a, a, a great amount of time and how does it reach to you people believe me it's a very very hard task uh, and after this, I would love I mean, teaching real time teachings, you know. Uh, as you remember, that we have started, I mean, the concept of psycholinguistics. So today, uh, I'm going to, you know, incorporate some new concept actually in it. And I have already shared the book with you people. So, uh, I mean, this presentation is going on actually uh, uh, an introduction, acquisition production. So little bit we have discussed, I mean, these concepts there in the previous lecture. But I'm trying to, you know, incorporate, I mean, these discussions in order to, uh, in order, uh, you know, to, to concretize actually, I mean, the concept that you are going to develop regarding this psycholinguistics. Uh, well, uh, obviously, uh, we have discussed, uh, I mean, uh, psycholinguistics before, but anyhow, if you look at this, this is a uh, neuro linguistic uh, was used actually for psycho linguistics before, but uh, and it it its its main focus was relationship between language and human brain, uh, and and uh, which was actually called neuro linguistics, uh, and obviously a neuro linguistic further focuses a neural mechanism, which uh, plays its part. Uh, in the human brain that uh, you know that controls acquisitions production and you know comprehensions um, psycholinguistics then again I'm, I'm trying to just look at from another point of view that is uh, branch uh, sometime uh, I, I just remember that we said this uh, branch of study which combines the discipline of psychology and, 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 and linguistics and psychology was considered to be the study of soul, the study of mind. So therefore, uh, nowadays, I mean, the, the concept of psycholinguistic, it is used. The relationships of, uh, of mind and, and language. It, in simple terms, it means that what is the role of mind in learning language, right? So uh, you see this human mind is a greater role because uh, these diagrams and these photographs are coming again and again before you the year. You, you see, uh, well and then oh, important aspects of psycholinguistics. I, I would like to talk about on this that important uh, aspect of uh, the psycholinguistics. You see here, very very important, you know. Uh, the, the first thing that is that uh, uh, when uh, the coinage of the term it means coinage means that when this term was coined when this term was made when this term was manu manu manufactured and then we are going to talk about I mean uh, about this you know there is a separate branch of study we are going to talk briefly on it as well and then you know this Chomsky and this 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 uh, Chomsky, I mean uh, this Chomsky, and it becomes adjective from Chomsky. Chomsky revolution. When Chomsky, when he came actually, and uh, you know this is very very this is uh, very very this is very very important. You know, 
when this Chomsky, when, you know, when he comes there, so he really created, I mean, some revolution. So this is, uh, uh, I mean, the whole revolutions, you know, which this gentleman is, is brought, you know, is really revolutionized the field. And then, uh, obviously, work on psycholinguistics. So, psycho work, because this is such a fuzzy area, so work on it continues. Right, it doesn't stop here, but it continues. And then, area of study, what does exactly this psycholinguistics focus on? Right, and methodology, uh, what kind of methodology is, is uh, what kind of methodologies are used there? Uh, but most uh, probably uh, you see in the last last lecture, you know, uh, last uh, lecture basically, uh, you saw that in the last lecture we also uh, focused, uh, you know, on uh, language acquisition, uh, language acquisition and language productions and language comprehension. And I hope and pray that you must have gone through, I mean, that lecture in the previous lecture so you must have got an idea on the concept of what is language acquisition what is language production and what is language comprehension and so please uh, you you just go these terms because these terms will come again and again and, and actually in even uh, on the lecture uh, you see uh, the coinage of the term uh, this term I mean uh, is coined by Jacob Robert you know Jacob Robert, uh, he is actually one of the scientists, or rather one of the psycholinguists. Uh, but uh, as still, I mean, you see that still this, this uh, and this uh, frequently used word uh, in 1946. So uh, uh, another person, he basically frequently used this particular word, he called Henry, and because of it, this came into currency. Then uh, Chomskyan revolutions, uh, you know this Chomsky, he is a big name actually, every one of you, I mean, uh, every one of you know, know it that uh, Chomsky is, is actually is a big name. Chomsky uh, says, he means that human possesses a special innate, innate ability for language and that complex syntactic features such as recursion are hard work. In simple, this what this particular sentence means, that we human beings are, you know, genetically, nobody has given this us, but we genetically are pre-programmed. We are born, actually, with innate, innate ability. We, we are born with, innate means inborn. We are genetically designed, you see, with special innate ability for language. Right, and we are also, uh, and and uh, you know, um, uh, actually, uh, then uh, this, uh, you know, the, uh, this uh, recursions, that which you know, time and again, actually, which rephrases in, in which re, which uh, embed actually the phrases in the words you see into different structures, and um, we are just you know connected with uh, such things. And then they say that laid language, language, uh, they say language, uh, uh, language acquisition. You know, they say language acquisition. Remember that language, they, they, they think that language, language acquisition, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to write with this cursor, right? But still, I'm, I'm trying. Language acquisition device language acquisition device you know you see here language acquisition device um language acquisition device that all the humans have ability to learn language uh, i mean the every person has the ability with irrespective of his or her nationality or geography but every person has been given the ability of learning and picking up language you know so this lead is fixed in the human mind they think of it right 
there is a further discussion actually on the lead as well right uh, now uh, there, uh, there are some people who term lead actually to be a gray mass in, 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 uh, in, in a brain and obviously uh, you see that uh, works has been continued right from the time of Plato and you know uh, I, I mean um, but uh, you know the, the time the work on psycholinguistic uh, continues you know so even uh, you see here the name in 19th century uh, Paul Broca Charles Socket and Wilron Leveld uh, you know you, uh, you you see these names uh, Paul Broca uh, Charles Hawkins and see here well lived you know they are important psycholinguists who did work on it so uh, we can say that uh, work is still going on, on this uh, uh, regarding a language existence you see there was the first concept uh, you know that existed regarding uh, uh, language that language exists actually in the right hemisphere right they thought language uh, they, they thought that language existed actually in the right hemisphere right uh, but uh, if, if if you look uh, I mean you will find otherwise uh, there are still theories and people they're still trying but uh, in today's world I mean language is is said to to be found actually in the left hemisphere right and further uh, we 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 move on actually uh, it, it's very very important and you must have gone through I mean uh, some design features of language which is extremely very very important indeed you know uh, I, I think uh, uh, I hope that you are uh, uh, you are clearing seeing actually uh, through this uh, image uh, I'm, I'm I'm magnifying it for uh, better visibility options you know uh, you see here um, I'm checking it whether it's working or not okay um, obviously uh, there are certain design features characteristics of language right uh, you must have gone through them in the previous classes so here you see uh, Ocal auditory channel. Ocal auditory channel. It means this is the basic quality of a language, you know, of any language spoken anywhere in the world. That it must have a vocal auditory channel, right? A vocal auditory channel. Um, what is this ocal auditory channel? Uh, you you must have gone through it. But uh, let me uh, just uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, explain it. You see, just in a short way you, you can find it it is here this is the oral uh, uh, auditory channel uh, you see of this is actually the auditory uh, channel you see for the productions you see of a language there uh, what exactly you see here um, uh, you see this is trachea this is larynx ulva velum palate alveolar ridge teeth and you can find it, 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 it is here this is you know this is the structure of a mouth right uh, it, you see that this is the structure of the mouth and uh, up uh, and uh, upon it actually the nose and the nasal cavity is, is there you see these are actually the teeth and lip and tongue so here the tongue and the tongue has got diff, uh, uh, different positions you know for the productions of consonants and you know vowel sounds and this is the structure I, I hope that you must have been explained the structure before so I mean the the aim of this particular lecture is not just to talk about on it but I'm just you know for refreshing your memories uh, and then uh, you must have got actually I mean the place of uh, articulation that from where from where certain sounds are actually produced and manner of articulations that how do sounds are actually articulated so uh, uh, for example the leaps the leaps you know the sound uh, in which leaps are actively involved in, in their productions you see are term labial and the teeth sound like the seat seat sound you know in which the teeth are obviously involved are called dental and alveola you see here 
just behind you know uh, this is this is the place just behind actually uh, you know the upper teeth ridge I mean this ridge you know that is term alveolar ridge ridge is you know uh, like a serrated you know uh, ups and downs actually uh, uh, like uh, 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 like this you know like this you see this is called actually ridge so behind our teeth you can find this ridge over there and then palatal I mean look it is here here you can see the t the, the, the topmost part actually of the um, roof of the tongue palatal and the sounds actually they define palatal velum you see here velum I mean the back part actually of your palatal stump is velum all right and the sound they are pretty they are vela vela and uvula and uvula and you, you see it is here uvula and a larynx and then we 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 find them is laryngeal sounds and then uh, you see here um, the glottis you know the glottis space between the ocal folds you know it's space between the ocal fold that is term is the glottis and then epiglottis it is very much there so this is just I mean for refreshing your memory uh, but basically uh, you know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to you know just to tell you about that a vocal auditory channel vocal I just showed you did how the sound is actually produced there but for that but for that uh, you know you, you see here uh, uh, I mean this vocal auditory means it involves that how the speech is produced and how does it moves actually to another channel um, to uh, uh, to another uh, you know uh, person and which involves that speech production and speech comprehension you know it takes it. so this is the main quality of language that language is uh, is to have I mean all auditory channel all right and number second you see the broadcast transmission and directional receptions so uh, the human language is this quality that it broadcast transmission and then it is all a directional reception for example if I say something to you people is I am now uh, through this medium I mean this online mode in addressing you people there so I'm actually broadcasting something I'm transmitting you something but at the same time you are directionally receiving something because this particular online lecture if you do not listen you will never understand so this directional reception is also coming there what it means that transmission and reception is taking place you know simultaneously and another quality of the human you know uh, language that is you see here very very important this is what transience we, we call it transience you know transience okay uh, evanescence evanescence we can also use for the transience you know uh, I mean it's it's very difficult just to uh, write it uh, through this thing but still I'm, I'm a transience or we can say uh, uh, evanescence what Evanescence, you know, evanescence. All right, uh, ev e evanescence. All right, evanescence. Uh, I think in spelling, uh, I'm making some mistakes uh, because uh, this is very difficult. Means uh, the, 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 you know, it means that the moment you speak, the moment you speak, you know, so the waves through which um, I mean, uh, speech takes place, you know, they fade. They, you know, they, they disappear actually in the ear. What well, this is the quality of actually the human. Uh, rapidly, uh, because uh, uh, I mean, you do not, f you do not see. I mean, the waves actually in the air. Uh, the same, uh, I mean, quality may be shared with animals as well, because uh, we also don't see their, um, I mean, um, their um, sound as well interchangeability you see uh, uh, you, you you find it here that interchangeability is very much there I mean for example uh, the mind is involved actually in, in this uh, in, in language um, you know productions right your ears are involved right so I mean you hear one another and then is the result you keep on actually I mean communicating for example you are you're looking at me through this medium I mean this online mode 
but at the same time you will also you know you you will also be responding to my this lecture or if a two person speaks and talks you know so the factor of interchangeability is there one says one thing another says another thing this is actually the quality of a human and total feedback so even you you also get feedback you see upon your language uh, upon your uh, you know language so uh, as a result of total feedback you know uh, thus communications continues right and uh, uh, then uh, there is uh, specializations you know uh, well uh, this means that uh, we we can say uh, that uh, i think uh, you must have heard actually uh, the term language uh, specific you know language uh, specific uh, uh, i mean you must have heard language uh, sp specific uh, speech specific and speech uniform species specific sorry uh, you must have heard this term this species, species uh, specific and species uniform so language is the only position in, uh, that human has i mean such a perfect language human can have only that, that, that that's what i mean and uh, there is uh, another thing uh, you find it that is semanticity all right uh, you you find it here I mean, semanticity means highly directly regarded to meaning. For example, if if you if somebody says that pass the salt, all right. So it doesn't mean that you have to pass actually the salt which is given to you, but rather it means that you um, you are asking for someone. Uh, you are asking to someone for for the use of salt uh, during your lunch or uh, something else, right? So this language uh, semanticity, you know, it enables you to use meaning within a certain thing. Like uh, another uh, very much uh, frequent um, quality of this language, which normally you must all be familiar with, that is actually arbitrariness. What is this arbitrariness? Remember that the language, the words, the expressions, you know, that we make, you know, they they. Uh, that we make for certain objects like um, you know um, like uh, here you, you find where all right this is just uh, I mean uh, just one of five alphabets W H A L E V L but it stands I mean it signifies it means a bigger the biggest animal on earth there is no biggest animal this is blue well this is the biggest uh, you know creature on earth but it, you know, and uh, and on the other hand, you see here, uh, microorganism which cannot be seen, which cannot be seen. Uh, I mean, with naked eye, you can see only them with, you know, with, uh, I mean, telis, uh, with the microscope, you know. So it doesn't mean so arbitrariness means that you know the word, the word which stands for certain thing has got no inherent relationship actually with uh, with that particular thing for example it means that if a word which stands for something big so the word should also be big no this should not be there the language has got no inherent relationship with the thing it stands for see here well is the biggest animal on earth but you know only a five word uh, a five alphabet word is used for well while similarly you find it here I mean microorganism which, which which can even which cannot be even uh, seen with uh, with naked eye but here is uh, you see one a uh, one two three uh, two three four five six seven eight uh, nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen you know here you see a bigger word is used for a smallest thing so it means that arbitrariness means that there is no inherent relation between the words and the things they stand for. Right, I hope you understand this now. Okay, and now, uh, discreteness. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in human, uh, human has been also endowed with the quality of discreteness, you know. Oh, this discreteness means actually uh, 
that each and every word is clearly articulated each and every you know syllables you know even morphemes you know and phonemes can easily be identified and they can easily be pronounced you see so but the animals do not have this uh, you know this quality i hope you understand means uh, discreteness you know uh, for example this is you know this is uh, the uh, acoustics you see of pen so now you see a pen is is uh, you know discreetly can be looked at seen and there are some you know uh, gapes and thing like this uh, pen well, uh, and here are some acoustics you see for, for, for the word bin is also here, right? So it means uh, that human signs can, human sounds can be, you know, separately identified each and every part. But so far the animal case is concerned, animal sounds cannot be identified. For example, you might have here, like for example, the word be, me. Yeah, like, like these words, you know, you cannot, uh, they are just continuous while pin. So, per, you know, you, 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 you identify the sound here. So, such quality of human's language where each and every um, uh, phonetic alphabets, uh, uh, phonetic sounds actually can be identified separately, you know, our term is discreteness, right? Um, then we we move on actually to uh, displacement you know human uh, human you see here uh, for example uh, you can see here like uh, they have written here shades of Julius Caesar uh, you can talk about the Julius Caesar I mean Julius Caesar existed in history but still you can talk about him rather in simple way uh, I mean, humans can talk about present, past, and even future, right? For example, if something happened in the past, you know, we can still talk about those things, right? And uh, something that is just in front of us there, we can even talk about them as well. But, uh, you know, um, even uh, we can say about things which have not happened yet. We can even talk about those things. So such quality of a language, you know, uh, which which enables us uh, to talk about, you know, we uh, to, to talk about, you know, past, right? Past, uh, uh, you know, uh, present, right? Uh, spelling uh, mistakes uh, should be uh, because. It's very really hard. I mean, this is um, the right with it. And future. While animals uh, cannot uh, have this uh, quality, right? A uh, dog, for example, if a dog sees a thief entering into home, so the dog may bark at that time, right? And if uh, a thief comes in, you know, he uh, makes a diff and then goes away, you see, from the home. So a dog cannot tell his owner that I was uh, last night I was barking because uh, a thief came right and I just barking there so animal cannot talk about past or even they cannot talk about or they can uh, the future only some animals can make grunting sounds or you know crying and thing like this only at the present when they see any danger and you see another uh, quality you see of language that is productivity very very important and and uh, she has a purple hair like uh, i mean this is just an example the person he, he is producing something there so language productivity means that uh, you cannot be fitted like any computer with commands and you cannot be limited with that that you can only talk about um, you know for things uh, which uh, according to certain uh, feedback information but you can produce new and noble sentences as well so human has uh, the capability of producing even noble sentences so we can say that language is a set of fine art
out of which infinite truth is sentences can be produced, right? Chomsky says like this. And traditional transmission, uh, like you see there, um, language, I mean, what is that? That's an igloo. So you can also find it, uh, uh, language users also try to traditionally transmit the data, right? So, uh, and furthermore, uh, uh, you also find actually the duality of patterning there. I mean, there is a certain pattern there. Like even you, you can, you can find pattern on the, in the written actually composition of language. But similarly, you can also find. I mean, um, uh, patterning in in the sound system as well. So uh, both. You see the duality uh, of pattern is very much there in language. For example, if I say some, uh, uh, um, um, I mean meaningless words, mumbling, jumbling. You know, if I say, so you will obviously be confused because my these sounds do not have patterning of either English. Of other pattern to which we are exposed, like Urdu, English, you do not find the same pattern of sound actually in either of these three or four languages. So therefore, the duality of pattern is very much there. For example, if you speak something, you find a certain pattern in actually in the sound, and if you write something, so there you find also a pattern there, and actually in the morphemes, right? So. Um, uh, I hope that you, uh, I mean, this is a long lecture, which I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to actually, uh, uh, I'll, I'll be giving certain series of lecture on it, but today I'll finish it, inshallah, don't worry, and then I'll uh, upload this separately. And remember, a good thing is that I will also type, I mean, this research, though there will be some uh, spelling mistake, because machines cannot understand the whole language. But still, I would like uh, to share with you people even the written script of my lecture because I have also, because of online learning, I have learned uh, also so many things. So I will be certainly sharing with you people my written script of lecture as well. So uh, you see here, um, uh, William, uh, uh, William uh, Levert, Le William Levert, you know, uh, uh, obviously uh, you see here the reading. Um, he was born actually in Amsterdam, uh, a Dutch psycholinguist, and he is influential research of uh, on human language acquisitions, right, and speech productions, right. Uh, if you remember, we had discussions, a little bit discussion actually on these two things, but with the passage of time, we'll move on there. He developed uh, a comprehensive uh, theory of the cognitive processes which are involved in the act of speaking, including the significance of the Melton lexicon. Well, um, I mean, this uh, word uh, lexicon or lexicology, uh, le uh, you, you, you must have heard actually this term. Lexicon in short term means dictionary, right? So, uh, mental lexicon did uh, similarly, uh, we do have a mental lexicon and which, uh, which have according to some have pocket of information of related uh, uh, they are semantically webbed you know uh, and whenever we talk about something you know so the same semantically or uh, alike webs you know they are activated and that's the information with the fraction of seconds you see uh, I mean retrieved and well um, I, I, I must tell you now actually um, the areas of uh, study, you know, that is uh, actually cognitive science, you know, which also comes under psychology, and we will be certainly be talking about the cognitive science, and then obviously psychology. Psychology, as I said, it was considered to be the study of soul, but I mean, the in in modern uh, parlance, it is used is is the study of. Um, uh, you know mind and then we, we also I mean psycho psycholinguistics is also touching uh, regarding linguistic as well so obviously uh, you, you all know about linguistics since you have been the students of linguistic and speech and language pathology uh, we will also be uh, studying about them 
Uh, now we move to Paul Broca. Uh, he, you see, uh, his uh, actually his uh, birth. He was a French physician. Remember, he was a French physician. He was a surgeon. He was an anatomist. An anthropologist. So uh, I mean, uh, strictly he wasn't a linguist, but uh, he has done a tremendous work actually for the linguist as well. Um, you know, uh, he is basically uh, best known for the Broca areas, uh, 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 regions of the frontier lobe. You know, this uh, Paul Broca area. You know, a region of the frontal lobe, right? And he basically uh, is credited with that particular area uh, where language is located. Uh, then uh, obviously we have um, this Charles Hockett. He was a linguistic anthropologist, right? And he basically has come with a set feature uh, that characterized the human language. I just discuss, I mean, those uh, features of language, you know. And apart from it, he's, uh, he, he, he actually differentiated uh, human communication from animals' communications, right? He called these characters, remember, the design features of language. But by, by, by design feature means that on which the structure of language is built, right? So, uh, my dear, uh, we will be uh, moving on uh, theories of psycholinguistics like uh, equation, production, and comprehensions. Uh, but before that, um, I, I, I'm going to talk on it in the next uh, sessions. But first, I like to actually record the first one. In the meanwhile, I'll upload. I'll keep. I'll keep it uploading and you will be certainly uh, be doing so uh, this is this was the uh, the first part and now we are uh, moving to uh, part two of uh, this lecture uh, 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 after some time in the meanwhile i will uh, try to you know cut it now and now this is actually uh, 12 uh, you know uh, 12 25 all right nice and uh, we come back to you so please uh, stay with us and don't move away thank you very much <laughs>